In this video, we're going to give you a detailed guide to the component tree. This is the area in a Spires interface where we manage the individual 3D components that make up our composite model. It's located at the base of the modeling tab. Here you can see we've just opened a new file in the software. I'm going to come down and click on the modeling tab and you can see the component tree by default is kept in the lower half of the modeling tab. You can see at the moment, as we've just opened a new file, the component tree is empty and it tells us no components created yet. If I wanted to build a component, click on the drawing tab here, could sketch a circle in my part, come back to the modeling tab, click on create shape from vectors. We'll just make a round shape, 45 degrees, no limit. Here, remember, we tell the software the combine mode we want for our component and we give it a name. And those things are going to be reflected once we've calculated the shape and we've hit close by what's showing to us here in the component tree. You can see there it's displaying the name we entered and here it's displaying to me the combine mode which is currently set to add for that particular component. Let's come up and tile the windows here so we can see both the 2D and the 3D view. Now you'll see that our component is currently checked. If we uncheck it, then it will be undrawn from both the 2D and the 3D view. If we check the box next to it in the component tree, then once more it'll appear. We can also click on the name of the component in the component tree in order to select it. And you'll see that that also is shown as being selected in the 2D view where the grayscale becomes highlighted and in the 3D view where the component turns red. We can click somewhere else in the list in order to deselect. As well as creating components within the software, we can also import various types of 3D data to create a component. If I come up and click on the icon to import a component or 3D model, and from the project folder, I'm just going to choose the file horsetrotting.3dclip and hit open. You can see that that's now been loaded in at its original size and position. It's been added to the component tree and it's just used the same name as the file had when we imported it. So you can see the component is called horse trotting. Once we've created a component and it's been added to the component tree, the method that was used to model it is irrelevant. It's just another 3D shape that we can select either by clicking on it from the tree or by clicking on it in the 2D view or by double clicking on it in the 3D view and then use the editing tools that we've got in order to manipulate it and combine it with other components in order to make our finished model. Let's open another file now that has a lot more components in it so we can show you some other aspects of the component tree and what it can be used for. Let's click on the drawing tab. I'm going to go up to file open and from the project folder I'm going to click on the file bare comp tree example .crv 3 d hit open and I do not want to save that file we were just working on there. I'm going to come up click on the icon to tile the windows vertically so we can see both the 2D and the 3D view here and if we click on the modeling tab you can see that the component tree for this particular file has a lot more objects in it. As we discussed before there are various things that we can tell by looking at our list of components. First of all, if I just hover the cursor over any of the components, it gives me some information about them to do with their height, whether they've got any base height and what combine mode they're set to. We can also see if the checkbox is switched on or not, whether the component is visible or not in the 3D view and therefore part of the composite model. We have a little visual indicator here that shows us the different combined modes and we also can see the name of the component as well. The order that the components are in in the tree is extremely important. Basically the way the software works in defining the composite model, which is the part we can see in the 3D view and what we're going to calculate roughing and finishing toolpaths on, is that it starts at the top of the tree and then just works its way down combining each subsequent component with the one before it based on the combine mode that we have set for it. The tree works cumulatively. So by the time we get down to this component that's called right paw here, we know that that's combining with the result of everything that's happened above it. We can see this more clearly if we just go ahead and use the check mark here to undraw everything in the component tree and then switch on each component one at a time. 
So if I start by clicking the checkbox for main body, we can see that's just a simple rounded shape we've got there. Then below that we can see we've got something called left leg group. We can tell this is a group of components because it has the little plus mark here. But because this is grouped together, it acts as a single component. If we wanted to see what was part of the group, we can click on the plus and see that that's made up of two components called left leg and left foot. And they're actually merging together internally as well. So if we check this to switch it on, we can see the result of the group of those two components. And we can see pretty obviously how this is made up of two components and that that's being merged with what's above it. So we've got main body and then merging into that is left leg group. Then if we switch that on, then merging into that is right leg group. Now if we change the order of these though, then something different would happen. If we were to take main body here and we move that down the list, so we can do that using the arrows here or we can drag it into a new position. So let's click the arrow twice and we'll see that the software updates the composite model in the 3D view and now what we've got, if we look down the list, is left leg group being merged with right leg group. And they're not overlapping, so that doesn't matter. But then main body has a combined mode which is set to add. So the areas where they overlap are adding together instead of merging. In order to change this, we either need to move main body back to the top of the list, or we'd need to change its combined mode, perhaps to set it to merge now. The reason we didn't see it when it was at the top of the list here causing any problems with it being set to add is because it was the first thing in the list and so it was effectively adding to nothing. So here as I say we could either move it back up in the list so we could click on the arrows and that would change it or if we moved it back down again here then we could right mouse click and we have the option under the right mouse click menu to change the combine mode for this. So we could come into here and click on the option to merge and you could see that would also create the same result because now we've got left leg group merging with right leg group merging with main body. You can see that everything below this down to left ear is also set to merge. So if we just click these on we can see all these individual components merging together. Then we can see a different combine mode for inner ear left and if we look hover over that you can see the combine mode is subtract. So if we click on that we can see that that's just a small shape that's subtracting down in order to make this concave part of the ear. If we right mouse click on that, change the combine mode to add, we can see that raising up now. I'm going to right mouse click, change the combine mode back to subtract and then I'm just going to switch on the rest of the components here. You can see the head merging into the result of what's happened above it. Then the nose area being added on. Now again, that's a group made up of multiple components. And then the eyes, which is also made up of multiple components here. We can see, again, because of the plus we have in the component tree, that that is a group of components. But because it's grouped together within the component tree here, it acts as a single object. We group components together for two main reasons. One is so that we can select them and edit them as a single object. The other is because we may want to make a sub-assembly where we have a different set of combined modes that are working together in order to make one component that we can then add, subtract or merge with the other components in the list. You'll see many examples of this throughout the different modeling tutorials. So just to reiterate before we move on here, the order in the component tree and the combined modes that the different components and groups are set to is extremely important because that is the only thing that will define what we see in the 3D view and therefore what our composite model is. And that's important because when we calculate a 3D toolpath, that's the object that the 3D toolpath will be calculated on. Whatever objects are visible and whatever we can see in the 3D view. Something that doesn't have any effect on the final 3D model are the grayscale previews that we see in the 2D view here. What these are for is to give us an indication of the shape and position of the object and make it easy for us to select the 3D models from within the 2D view itself in order to edit them. You can see here that the order that we see these grayscale previews has nothing to do with the 3D model. 
but sometimes this is important because if an object is behind another grayscale then we can't select it from the 2D view. And we can control this order using the component tree list. For instance here I can see that this area of the model, the nose area group, is behind the head here. If I right mouse click on this I can come up to where it says 2D preview and we can either choose to move to front or move to back. If I click on move to front we can see that's going to move that grayscale in front of all the others and now I can actually come in here and select it. And I can do that with any component that we can pick from the list here. So maybe we'd want to pick right poor in this case, right mouse click, 2D preview, move to front and that's going to become the prominent object. As I said, this has nothing to do with the 3D model itself but is something that's useful to know how to control so that you can access different grayscales within the 2D view to select them. Now let's look at some of the other options that we have under the right mouse click menu in the component tree. If we right mouse click on one of the components here, we've seen we can change the combine mode, we can adjust the 2D preview order, the grayscale order, we can copy a component to the clipboard. If we click on this, it would allow us to paste a copy of it back into this session of Aspire or to go into another copy of the software and paste um, a copy of this component into there and add that to the component tree within that session. If we want to make a copy in here of a component, we're probably going to use the duplicate option rather than copy and paste. If we click on that, we can see that what the software is going to do is to make another copy of the main body component. Now we could use that if we wanted to edit or adjust. Sometimes the duplicate command is useful if we want to make a safe copy of something. Then we can switch off the original and we know we can take the new one and edit that without affecting the one that we had before. So if it goes wrong we can always just delete that and switch back on the original copy we had. The next option under the right mouse click menu is to export a component or group as 3D clip art. If we click on that, it will let us save that component as a 3D clip file. We saw earlier how with a 3D clip file we can import that back in to create a new component. If we wanted to export multiple components but still keep them as individual components, then what we'd want to do is group the components together first and then export them. For instance, if we wanted to take our whole model of the teddy here we could click to select the first component in the list, shift and click to select the last component here, right mouse click, choose the option to group, and then I could actually take this, we might want to right mouse click on this and rename it, we'll call that Teddy, and then we could actually right mouse click on that and go to the export as 3D clip art option, and now if we save that as a 3D clip file, if we imported it back into another session of the software that would come in as a single component group and we'd be able to go ahead, right mouse click and ungroup on that in order to get back our original set of components. So you can see that ability to group together components in the tree and export them as a piece of 3D clip art that we can use in other models is very very useful. So you saw there an option to group and ungroup things, if we right mouse click, we can see that that section of the right mouse click menu will show us different things depending what we have selected. And the options we might see there would be group if we have multiple, um, multiple components selected. If we have a component which is already a group then we'll see the option to ungroup and if we select multiple components that are grouped we'd see the option to ungroup all. Next option in the right mouse click menu is the option to delete a component. We can right mouse click and click on that in order to select that. Or if I just come up and hit edit and undo we'll get that back. Or we could just select a component from the component tree and hit delete on the keyboard in, also, uh, in order to delete something from the list. Again let me come up to edit, we'll just undo that. Next we have the ability if we right mouse click to choose the option to rename. That means it'll select the text in here and then we could change this and give it whatever name we wanted and then just click in any other part of the list to accept that. We can also rename by clicking and selecting the component and then clicking at the end of its name in order to go into the same editing mode there. 
Next in the list we have various options for showing or hiding components in the list. You can see if we click on one object there then we can choose to show this if it's not shown, show only this which will undraw all the other components, show all except that one or show all. So if we clicked on show only this then you can see that everything else would be undrawn and that one would be left drawn. If we right mouse click and say show all but this then we would get the opposite. We can just click to switch that back on again. You've also seen how we can hide everything in the list just by clicking the checkbox at the top here or we can click it on again in order to show everything in the list. If we right mouse click again we've got the option to hide and in that case we can either hide just this or we can hide all which is the same as clicking the box here. The last option under the right mouse click menu is the properties. If we select a component, right mouse click and click on that, that'll open the component properties form and here we can edit things including the name and the combine mode but also things to do with the shape height, base height, fade and tilt and also the appearance, the material that that component is shaded with. We can access the same function by clicking and selecting an object from the list and coming up and choosing the wrench icon here. In terms of selecting objects in the list, we can just left click in order to select something. As I mentioned before, we can also select objects from the 2D view by clicking on them or double clicking on them in the 3D view. And you can see that selects both in the 2D view and on the list as well when we do that. If we want to select multiple objects, then we can click on the first object we want to select, come down to the last object, hold the shift key down and click to select everything in between. Or if we want to select individual objects that aren't in a list here, we could select one, hold the control key down and then select other objects in the list as well. In addition to being able to select a single component in the list and moving it up and down with the arrows, we can also click and drag it to move it to a new position. So again if I want to click and then drag that up and drop it there I can. Or we could actually take uh, multiple components here and we could click and drag those to a new position in the list if we wanted. Again, click and I could drag that back up to the top there. So there's a lot of flexibility about how we can organise the order that we see things in the component tree and therefore what's happening in our composite model. That almost concludes our look at the component tree. You can see what an important part of the software this is if you're creating a 3D model. The order of the list under the component tree is exactly what's going to determine what you see in the 3D view and therefore what you machine when you create a 3D toolpath. In the video you've seen all the different ways that we can control the component tree both by clicking on the options that we can see in the list itself and also by using the right mouse click menu to access various other functions to help us manage our 3D objects. And that concludes this video.